355-12. Council Bill 355-12 is an ordinance appropriating federal forfeiture funds for the purchase of accreditation software for the police department and fixing the time when this ordinance shall become effective. Second reading. Staff, please. <coughs> yes, I'm basically here for questions. I know there was a little media attention to this. I think there's some confusion on the part of the public on uh, how the department comes across this money. So if I may, I'll take the few minutes just to explain. Uh, there's two kinds of forfeitures that the department deals with. The first kind is um, they're kind of small in nature. Someone's engaged in criminal activity and we recover $1,000 or $1,500 that we think is the fruits of that crime. We forward that to the, to the prosecuting attorney here in Boone County and we never see it again. Those are the funds that go to the school district eventually or are supposed to go to the school district eventually. On larger forfeitures, like we stop somebody with 50 pounds of marijuana, $150,000 in cash in conjunction with the Drug Enforcement Administration, those kinds of things are where we get our forfeiture funds. We don't see forfeiture money from those small forfeitures uh, that some people think we do. So there are very strict guidelines. I know that there's been some uh, media attention also that the review board, civilian review board, wanted to know why forfeiture funds couldn't be used for the uh, mediation program that they're trying to get started. It, based on my interpretation of the federal guidelines regarding forfeitures, that is not an appropriate use. Uh, and, and I've got some information here. If you'd like to be, inter if you're interested in it, I can forward it to you and let you have a look at it, but I thought that exp explanation needed to get out there. And I'll answer any questions you have. Uh, nationwide, forfeiture funds tend to be used strictly in police departments, uh, many times for training. Uh, and uh, in this case, uh, that that sort of uh, fits well with, with this use uh, uh, for accreditation. Obviously, that's a goal we have and is uh, part of our uh, strategy in the police department. So recommend the uh, expenditure to you and uh, appreciate that explanation, Chief. Do we have any discretion in regards to whether forfeiture funds are submitted to the state and then go to the schools or whether they're submitted to the federal government and then it's divvied up according to a formula. We do, if, if it's just the police department that makes the, the arrest, if the federal agencies are involved, and that's what happens, is on our big cases, typically the feds are involved in working with us. We have an officer... They're like shared investigations? Yes, sir. And we have an officer assigned to the DEA task force in Jeff City. So that's where most of this comes from. You know, I, I guess... Uh, I'm just, I don't think this is a, a big deal, but here uh, you have a $19 million budget and we're spending time on an $11,000 appropriation. And I just wonder if we just shouldn't have a policy that we know that you're getting forfeiture funds and the money should go into your budget for your use, you know, as you, as you see fit. I mean, I, I was on record as saying I thought we needed more police officers and, you know, it's just... Um, it, it kind of, and I, I don't want you to take this wrong, but it kind of has the uh, sense of found money to me. You know what I mean? You get a, sure, sometimes it is. You, you, <laughs> get, it, you get a $100 uh, refund you didn't know was coming. Well, that's funny money. Let's go blow it on something, right? right? And I, um, I, I just think it should be treated with the same discipline at all of it. And I know you, I know you do. And, I, and I'm not questioning the justification of this. I just wonder if, from a policy standpoint, we you know, that we shouldn't really be talking about this. It should go as soon as the budget, which you defend on an annual basis anyway. We'd, we'd be glad to do that if that's your pleasure, if that's the council's pleasure. Uh, this is a, a, an, something we didn't plan on buying before the budget year, and uh, it was something that my accreditation manager asked for after the budget had already been okay. passed. So, but we could do that in the future. Well, we could talk about that during the budget. I mean, it's not a big deal. Like yes, I sir. All right. Any other discussion? I would concur with what you just said. Uh, would anyone from the public like to speak? Gossman, 5306 Rice Road, Columbia. Um, it may not be a lot of money, but it might be a lot of money. Uh, it could be $11,000, which to me is a lot of money, but, you know, in the big picture of things, probably not a lot. 
we don't know how much money would come back from the feds, right? I mean, there's no way to tell, right? All of a sudden, they just or if it would let come you, back, or if it would come back, right? Um, I think just as a matter of pu good public policy, it would be good for the police department to say how they want to spend those funds if it comes back, and that it would run by uh, the elected officials uh, prior to just being spent by the police department as discretionary and off budget. Thank you. Ms. Um, my name is Tyree Bynum at 501 North Providence Road, Columbia, Missouri 65203. Uh, Mr. Mayor, City Council, appreciate you taking my comments, uh, Chief. Uh, you know, when I first when I first looked at the video and I first read about this, this wasn't the first time um, that I had uh, talked about or uh, thought about this issue. Uh, Michelle Alexander in the book The New Jim Crow uh, brings this up as as a national issue that happens in cities all over the nation. That a lot of this money, um, it, there's a moral aspect to it because first of all, if 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 police departments are are not accountable, even on this this small the small aspect, it it affects all of it. Uh, I think the mayor said basically, if your budget is this and this is a small portion, why not make sure that this is just that this is accountable as well? Especially if it goes towards uh, anything that has to do with public schools. You know, we have a 74 percent dropout rate for African American males and and, and some minorities here in Columbia. Um, there is a huge issue of of any type of 54 percent of, of youth can't find any jobs. So if this money can be directed back to the community in any way that will give this demographic uh, a hand up, uh, I think it should be used in, in that way. Also in the book, The New Jim Crow from Michelle Alexander, she mentions that, that it changes policy, that if this is the expectation of the executive branch locally, um, if this is the expectation to um, to not necessarily look for ways to um, use these funds in the appropriate way, that it it, cha it just changes the, the the culture and the dynamic uh, of the department. Uh, you know, you know they say that the the African Americans um, as a whole that the statistics show that we're 90 percent consumers. Um, you know, this is money that is coming directly from. Um, 70, you know, 75 percent minority, uh, uh, female, um, patriarchal, um, you know, basically female-led homes, and you know they say on average $250,000 is spent to educate educate your kids. So, you know, we already ta are talking about a demographic that has a leg down, and so anything that could help this community. Uh, to have a leg up, it, you know, if it comes to eleven thousand dollars, you know, it's kind of hard to look at the at the specific numbers if there's not a lot of accountability that's done on it. So it is a huge issue. It is national, and so if we can be the leader in in making sure that that we use these funds appropriately, um, and, and I think not only will it it, it do some help uh, for the community that's affected the most, which is normally the first ward but it's going to help um, also to change some of the long-standing abuses that we have nationally. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Pynum. Good evening, Council and um, Chief Monta Welch, 2808 uh, Greenbrier Drive. I do want to say that um, I have sentiments personally, as well as a lot of folks I know that would agree with both of the two previous speakers and feel like um, we have really an overall problem within the context of um, how our culture has um, developed. And these are some funds that federally, you know, supposed to uh, be directed towards schooling and education. And f I feel like uh, most people would really appreciate them being used in a way that would help uh, combat the problem and, ag again, just agree with the two speakers before for us to really look at using these funds in a way that holds us accountable to how we do our own books and <coughs> and set an example that way as well as um, use it in the way that would really benefit the folks that could use that help to um, pull themselves out of that type of culture. So thank you. 
Thank you. My name is Carl Scala, 5201 Gascony Drive. Um, I, now that the chief is here, I, I assume that these funds are uh, designated for uh, the the uh, software to support the CALIA accreditation process because that's been in the process for several several years. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes, sir. Well, in in that case, I certainly would endorse uh, the the disposition of these funds for the use of that. Calia accreditation. That's very important for the police department. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scala. <clears throat> Hi, my name's Sean O'Day. Uh, tonight I'm speaking for uh, Americans for Forfeiture Reform, a nonprofit research and advocacy organization. I will be reading a statement prepared by the executive director, Ethan Thampy. Uh, in May 2010, we first approached City Council about the misuse of asset forfeiture in Columbia and are glad to be here to discuss a sensible way forward. We asked for an ordinance to be drafted based on the following four ideas. Any use of forfeiture funds should be subject to meaningful public oversight. The use of civil asset forfeiture should be restricted entirely. Columbia law enforcement should only engage in forfeiture through the criminal process. Columbia law enforcement should not partner with federal agencies offering forfeiture payouts for participation. Columbia law enforcement should respect their duty under the Missouri Constitution, <coughs> Article 9, Section 7, to send the proceeds of forfeiture to Missouri schools. Over the past two years, Americans for Forfeiture Reform has sought to simply ask how Columbia Police Department uses asset forfeiture refunds. At every turn, CPD has stymied our request by asking for sunshine fees in excess of $500 for what should simply be a simple data request. In 2011, CPD even deleted a publicly submitted poll on its Facebook page when Americans for Forfeiture Reform members asked for an accounting of forfeiture funds. Over 100 people voted to endorse the request in that poll, yet CPD refused to engage with us on the issue and actively quashed public debate that by all rights should have been protected by the First Amendment. We can have a debate over the use of legal process of civil asset forfeiture or the merits of CPD participation in federal forfeiture payouts, but it should be easy for the council to simply ask for a public accounting of the way the Columbia Police Department and the city prosecutor have used asset forfeiture over the last five years. Moreover, we stand ready to work with council on this issue. We have a deep bench of former law enforcement and judicial personnel that can, we can bring to the table to provide council with perspectives that we believe are important to this issue. The use of asset forfeiture has angered Americans since its earliest days when the Boston defense attorney, John Adams, defended clients such as John Hancock against the King of England. Even then, it was intolerable to, that Americans, that law enforcement should be funded through the unjust seizure of property. We urge the council to remember this history and uphold the values that first brought Americans together to create a more perfect union. Thank you, Mr. O'Day. Thank you. Eugene Elkin, 3406 Range Line. In this very area of thinking, because I come across so many individuals on a daily basis, I actually met the gentleman who insures the police department at $1 million a piece. This gentleman might not want to be insuring if any illegal activity is going on because I'm constantly told rumors, and I don't repeat everything I'm told. Please think about what all is being said here this evening and check it out. It's very important. Thank you, Mr. Elkin. Anyone else? Uh, council uh, discussion? Well, I, I for one, uh, thought it was important uh, that some of the speakers uh, made the recommendation to make sure that uh, the, the forfeiture funds um, are used and, and um, the public knows what used in a way that benefits the community and, as one person said, gives the community um, a leg up specifically. And I think there's, there's some real positiveness in that. So my thought was I think it's good for this to come before council. It could come on consent, and then if anyone wants to remove it from the consent agenda, they could. But there were, I think there were some good suggestions. I think this is a really good program that will benefit the the police department and the community. Um, but I, I think the recommendations, we could even tie it even closer to specific community um, projects, police related, that the community can clearly see directly benefit them. 
just for clarification, that 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 would be fine on the state forfeitures. On the federal right. forfeiture, right. guidelines are much right. different. So, right. Yeah, but I would agree with you. These forfeiture funds don't come back directly to the police department. Actually, they do come back to the city. We never know when or if they're coming. They don't uh, come to the police department per se. They come to the city. Correct. Treasury. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. So. It would be a simple task to to have council approve all expenditures of the forfeiture funds. And that's what we do, yes, sir. Okay. We don't ever spend out of that account without council approval. Ms. Hoppy's correct. We usually put it on the consent agenda, but I knew it was going to get some attention because of some of the media. Right. That it, so I asked Mike to so, put it on. So we're asking, you're asking how to spend those funds when they're expended? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Perhaps uh, a, a pre-council meeting we should... Uh, Go into all of the guidelines, the uh, federal guidelines, if you're interested Great. in that. It might be helpful. I'd be happy to do that. I think it would be a worthwhile discussion. I mean, I think the reason that, I mean, obviously some citizens have serious concerns about the possibility of forfeiture abuse since it's not always directly linked to criminal prosecution. Sometimes it's based upon being merely accused of a crime, but you're still out your money and it's quite a process um, to get it back. We would, you know, so that extra accountability of how those funds, you know, and this, I think the state of Missouri wisely puts it towards education so that they don't create any kind of perverse incentive to pad budgets by seizing people's assets, which is, I think, you know, where that would be at its most extreme case. So I think just, you know, to keep everybody as reassured, you know, as we can to do thing, everything really above board, bringing things in front of council. I'd be curious to see what kind of limitations we could do so that we could honor the federal, we could respect the federal guidelines, but honor the spirit of the Missouri law that it should go towards education or things that benefit the community. Um, and uh, certainly appreciate, you know, your hard work on all the, you know, not all the hot button issues, but, you know, more than your share. Sure. And other, you know, maybe other departments. It's, uh, you know, you're out there interacting with the community and, you know, really tough stuff. So definitely I appreciate uh, your efforts on this. And to be proactive, to give everybody a voice and, and, and to be real clear. Anyone else? Please call the roll. Council vote 355-12. Mr. Trapp? Yes. Mr. Kessel? Yes. Ms. Hoppy? Yes. Mr. McDavid? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. 